Send my uh, regards to my kinsman Herodian. Well, they had a son called Herod, and that would be the littlest Herod, Herodian being the littlest Herod, and in my view, that's who he's talking about when he sends those uh, greetings. This king who had been executed from Asia Minor to Rome, who had in their household a little Herod, who was called Aristobulus and had a little Herod, and that to me is the proof that Herod was a cousin or kinsman of, uh, that Paul was a cousin or kinsman of these people. Now you can check me out, and uh, it's in the letter to the Romans, and uh, you can decide if that is correct. But that's the story of Salome. Uh, but let us go back to, um, let us go back to this story of the death of uh, John the Baptist. So he quotes Josephus' story here. He relates that Herod lost his kingdom on account of the same Herodias, that he, that he was driven into exile, that is, this Herod Antipas, and to, had to dwell in Vien, uh, which is on the Rhone River in France, in Gaul. These facts are stated to him in the 18th book of his Antiquities, where in the same paragraph he writes about John. To some of the Jews, the army of Herod, who was then fighting Aretas, who's the Arab king across the, across the Jordan River. The point was is that um, Herod the Tetrarch had had a previous political marriage to Aretas' daughter, which is, would have been a wise thing for him to have if he was an ambitious uh, a governor. And uh, when he saw her Herodias was available to him, he divorced Aretas' daughter and married Herodias. Then, apparently, Aretas, the Arab king, got angry and declared war against uh, Herod the Tetrarch, who was governor of Galilee and Perea in Transjordan. This is very complicated. But in any case, he's governor of this and this area here. So Aretas is here. He's come up to Damascus, and he's fighting Herod, this Herod, over the fact that he divorced her daughter. All this is in Josephus. So this is the background. He lost his kingdom on account of Herodias. These facts are stated in the 18th book of the, of the Antiquities. Some of the Jews, the army of Herod, seemed to have been destroyed because Aretas defeated him. Was thus a signal, was a just thing, because it was vengeance for his death, the death of John the Baptist. For Herod slew him, though he was a righteous man. And all he did was exhort the Jews to practice a, a virtue or piety or righteousness, and in the pursuit of piety and righteousness towards God, to come to baptism. For this baptism appeared to him to have been be, uh, to be imparted for this object, not with a view to avoid uh, sinfulness, but for the pur purification of the body only, <coughs> because the mind had pure previously been purified by righteousness. Now, that is an incredible description of, uh, description of John's baptism, and it is not the description we get in, in the New Testament. <coughs> what he's saying there is you first must practice righteousness, and then in the Jewish way, you go to immersion to get rid of your bodily uh, impurities. Uh, Jewish women and others uh, immerse themselves every uh, month because of the uh, menstrual cycles and things like that. And so <coughs> uh, this immersion was a bodily purification only. The soul had to be purified beforehand by righteousness. And many flocked to him and delighted in his discourse. He was a popular leader, I agree. Herod dreaded the confidence everyone had in him. He feared that this confidence would lead him to propose a revolt. For they seemed to be, the Jews were, disp were, were disposed to do anything he might su su suggest. So, before any such uh, revolution or political change uh, brought on by this influence John had over the mass occurred, he thought that if he destroyed him before this happened, uh, he would not have to repent of it later. Well, that is a totally different story than, than the New Testament. The New Testament is a silly girl who, who, who wasn't even, in fact, uh, named and wasn't even, in fact, um, she was married to actually the person the mom was supposed to be married to, danced a sexy dance, and then Herod wasn't responsible for his actions because he liked John, and he thought John was a, a righteous man. Um, so, uh, whereas Josephus says, and the New Testament has the, the Jews being nasty to John and complaining against him and stuff like that. Uh, Josephus says just the opposite. John was a popular leader. He was recognized across the mass board. Uh, the rulers were, let me finish, the rulers were afraid of him 
And because they were so afraid of the influence he had over the mass, they thought he would lead a, re a revolt of some kind, and they thought that they should have a preventive execution to avoid that possibility, lest they should regret being part. So which of the two stories do you feel more historically reliable? In my view, the second one is obviously uh, the way people really behave. The first one is trying to get the Herodians off the hook. That is, in literature that's going to circulate in the Roman Empire, criticism of Roman officials is not a wise thing to do. And if you can make it look like the Roman uh, leaders liked, our, liked our, our leaders and were really weren't responsible for what they did but have been in some sense influenced by other people, you can make the, them look more innocent than they actually were. And I think that's what the Gospels are doing, whitewashing, whitewashing officials like Herod and uh, washing, uh, whitewashing officials like Herod and Pilate. Yeah. Um, I got the impression that in the, in the Gospel, not necessarily in the Gospel, but in the New Testament, that the Jews supported John the Baptist. No, the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees come out and... Well, After the people. Well, I'm sure the people the did. Well, okay, but the point is that they, they have the Pharisees and it calls them a generation of vipers and John is cursing these people who come out to him. Uh, yes, somewhat they support him, but on the whole, I think in the New Testament portrayals, there's different portrayals. You have to read the different Gospels. You have to set them side by side. Again, I don't think it's... Uh, Look at that's a historically confusing question. But we have to set all the gospels up side by side, but, but there is one gospel particular, I don't know which it is at the moment, that has John cursing the Jewish crowds that come out and say, Oh, you generation of vipers, who told you to, you know, to flee the wrath that's coming? And John is being very aggressive against the people coming. So uh, maybe some gospels are portraying it one way. But the, what I'm trying to say is, let's not get sidetracked. Which account are you going to follow? You can't have both. And the fact of the matter is that Herod is probably pretty cruel and pretty politically minded, and he executed this person with malice of forethought, period, because he was afraid that he was a popular leader. And I think that's going to go across the board for all our leaders. And this idea of plots and other things like that, or Roman rulers and governors who are uh, innocent, is just untenable to a strongly historically minded person. Anyway, that's from 